you are learning to make a multiplication grid so that eventually you'll be able to make your own in... Although the term dyslexia refers to an inability to read, it affects other areas of learning as well. Multiplication requires precise and efficient calculation skills, which can challenge the dyslexic learner. So let's start with the things that you know. Useful equipment for this session might include a laminated multiplication matrix grid, coloured markers, different coloured unifix blocks, a Velcro clock, and other magnetic resources. I know that you know some things, so let's start with the things that you know. So Start by getting to know your pupil. How numerate are they? Some have a much better sense of numbers than others. By knowing a little about your pupil and what interests them, you'll be able to devise mathematical puzzles that will engage them. Kate knows that William has a short attention span and limited digit span. Information will need to be delivered in small chunks. One of the key things with new pupils is, is getting that rapport. And that's why I want to know what, what are they good at, what are their strengths, um, what are their interests, so that um, I can think about the vocabulary that we're going to use. Um, you know, I can think of something that's going to interest them. I can make a game that's, you know, they're going to say, oh yes, I'd like to play that. If you don't know your learner, you're not going to get the best out of them. I wouldn't tackle teaching about the eight times table without some concrete apparatus. I was pretty sure that when William saw the five blocks, he'd be able to say five. Some children wouldn't be able to do that. If they can't conserve number, they, they wouldn't be able to do that. But for William, he's, he's actually got quite a good sense of number and spotting patterns. It's, again, it's the short-term memory that really is holding him back. Now, which one are you going to choose next? Which is the next five. each? You're going to do five. Get the pupil to revisit what they already know. This helps build confidence and can demonstrate learning bridges to new horizons. Here, William is learning that his knowledge of the one and two times tables can be added together with the five times table to help calculate the eight times table. To keep the process multisensory, the numbers on the page are turned into tangible blocks of colour. The building blocks can be assembled to produce a visual realisation of the different sums. I would always say try and get it off the page, even better than just visual with the um, Unifix blocks. It's, it's, he can handle them and so we were breaking the blocks up. Automatic recall of multiplication answers can be difficult for learners with a weak working memory. The multiplication square offers a safety net to answer questions when, sometimes, pupils struggle with other methods of learning. It can also show mathematical links, for instance how knowledge of the two times table can help with the four times table, which in turn can help with the eight times table, and so on. But what I've done now is we've got five blue and two white and one yellow. I don't, because I don't really find that easy. No. Although he was happy with the fiveness of five and he was happy with the threeness of three, if I can put it that way, when I gave him the two white ones and the one yellow one, he wasn't ready for that, so we had to go back a step to really make that explicit before he was comfortable to move on. And I needed him to be comfortable with that, to be able to show that you can build up the eight times table by knowing your fives, twos and ones. If he hadn't been able to get that, I would have had to stop it and, and say, we won't bother with that today, we'll, we'll do something else. Just thinking back, the really sticky point was just realising that that yeah. <laughs> it's OK to end a lesson if you feel the pupil has lost concentration and that further tuition might not be constructive. But allow the pupil to assess the lesson. Knowing what they've remembered and enjoyed can help you teach them in future. Any questions? A, I want to know that he has understood. It's easy for me to think he has, but I want his perception, you know. And I know 
well enough now I can usually judge I can see his sort of face glazes over sometimes I think he hasn't understood that I need to tackle that in a different way but why shouldn't he say oh, you know I did enjoy that I didn't enjoy that could we do it a different way that is developing in him his own support strategies and what works well for me a velcro clock can provide a fun challenge too Choose a times table and get the learner to place the corresponding multiples of between 1 and 12 in their correct positions. You can even make this a timed challenge. Children don't always have a lot of control over, you know, what they're doing. They're, you know, told you're going to do this, you're going to do that. So as a way of building self-esteem, if you involve the learner in the plan, then they tend to own it and want to do it. So to recap the key points for teaching multiplication. Get to know your pupil. Let them show you what they already know. Use physical objects to get the lesson off the page. Deliver information in small chunks. Use a multiplication square as a safety net. And let your pupil assess the lesson.